hello everyone and welcome back so today i am starting a new video series on how to get it started with competitive coding using python and when i was going through internet i found lot of material available for c and java but not a whole was available for python and the reason for this is that python is kind of slow compared to c and java and not lot of people recommend using this but there are some tips and tricks which you can use to run your python code faster and that's what i am gonna be discussing in these video series so before we move on with this video i would like you guys to subscribe to my channel because i will be uploading similar kind of videos which will help you take your programming skill to the next level and with that being said let's move on with today's video okay so the first and most important tip is that use the correct version of python when you are coding any solution in any contest and okay so let me open that coder and explain you so if you see here we are presented with lot of language and for python we are having lot of versions and if you see here for python we are having like python 2 and python 3 let me just search and find it here yeah so python 2 and 3 are available and python 2 is the older version of python and python 3 is the newer version of python and most likely people will be using python 3 and then they start coding the solution and when they get time limit at c dead error and then they start complaining that python is very slow but whenever you start coding in python use the correct version and Current version to use for Python is py3 and py3 is the faster version of Python it makes your code run faster and improve your code efficiency as well and I found an article on internet where they have explained uh, why py3 is faster than Python so py3 uses something like just in time compilation which make your code run faster and as you guys know that python is a dynamic language and whenever you run your code first thing compiler will do it will find the correct data type or it will guess the data type for your variable and that makes your code run kind of slow so this is taken care by just in time compilation process and that's the reason py3 is somewhat 7.5 times faster than normal python 3 and in fact they have mentioned that it is around 7.5 times faster than normal python and it's pretty amazing so choose the correct version of python and for our case it will be py3 okay so if you have understood this next thing we are going to discuss how to take input in python and for taking input in python i have taken some of the examples and, and i will show you how we'll take these as input in python and if you see here for sample input one this first line represents the value of n that means this is the size of array and these are the element of array so let's see how we take this as an input so we have a function name as input and that is used to take input and this method what it does it gives the output as a string so you have to convert into integer before put it into some variable so for that you use something as int and you are going to store the value in n so that is what most people do and in fact this input method is kind of slow and we have to use something known as std in to take the input which is much faster than normal input method so what we are going to be doing we are going to be using std in method and in order to use that you have to import it from a uh, sys library so let me just import it here and since we are already using input matter what i'll do i'll use the input variable which will store the value of sd in so let me do that as well so input is gonna be equal to std in dot read line 
you just have to do this and it will work as a normal input method okay so now we are going to be taking the input for the array and for that we have to use input method again but before that let me just explain you a split function which we will be using okay so what is split the is it splits the data and returns the list of the elements so what i mean by that is if you see here if i use normal input method and if i suppose give some input let's say as one and two then output will be one and two these are not splitted and it's rolled in list and if i use the split function now let's see the magic so now again we will be prompted for input and i'll do one and two here again and now it has written the list of elements and if you see here these elements are a string but what we have to do here we have to take the input as int and for that we can either form a loop and since this is a string we can either do something like this to convert each element into to convert each element into integer and what this uh, actually does is it takes each value from the string and is stored in i and then convert into int so first value of i will be one and it will be converted to integer value and then the i will change to 2 and it will be converted to integer 2 and then it's stored into list so let's see what happens now and again if i give 1 and 2 as an input now it will be as an integer so this will work fine but there is actually one quicker way by which you can take input and that's what is our point three use map to convert list to desired data type and since we want the output of list as integer value we can use map here so so map function has have two parameters and let me just explain you here so the first parameter will be the function which will be applied to the list and in all case we want to convert the list to the integer value so we'll map with int function and now we have to take the input as a string so the way to do that we'll use this input dot split function and as you know this input dot split function will return the list of a string and these will be converted to integer by this int mapping so let me do that as well here And now I have converted all the values of list to int and the next thing we have to create a list of the mapping and store this into some variable. Let me run it here. So if we try to take some input here, one, two, three, and if you notice after running this, you'll get some output with integer value and now these are converted to integer and if you want to convert into float just use float here and it will convert into float and let me just again take the input now these are converted into float so this is the preferred way of taking input okay so let's take the input there as well and here we have to take array and we we'll use the map function we'll map it to int and now i have to take a list of value and for that i'll use the split function once i have done that i have to convert this to list and this is how you'll take the input and let me run this for the sample input one and see how this works so we have n and we have array and let me 
try to print this as well and if everything works fine we'll get some output yeah so if you see here we have taken the correct input and we are getting the correct output okay so let's see how sample input 2 looks like so now instead of one value here we are having two values and this can be like a and b and this is the array again so we have five element and we have some value as k for which we have to do some operation so our array will be same and here we are taking only n but now we have to take two values so for how we'll return the two values we'll use the split function that is gonna give us the list of value and here instead of just single variable i can use one more variable as k and then i can use the map function let me just copy it here so why I am not converting this to list because we want to store these values into n and k. So once we have the value converted to int, each value will be stored into respective variable that is n and k. And if I try to take this input as well and it will work. So let me just take it as well. So this is working so let's just print the value of n and k as well so this is n and this is k so we should get some value of n and k so n is 5 and k is 3 and we are taking the array as input and this is correct now there are chances where you will be given number of test cases and for each test case you will have some sample input and if you see here this is just one sample input but if there are five test cases there will be five uh, sample inputs so if you see this example four we have the value of test case as two and we have like two different sample test cases here so for this what we have to do here we have to take the value of test case and so let me just take the value of test case as well so test case will be integer value again and for that we'll use input and this will return a string but we have to convert it into int value and this code what we wrote it was for single test case and now we have to run for the test cases so for that i'll run a loop for i in range t and for each test case we'll have different input and let me just take value of this as well so we have to indent the code so I think this should work but we don't have the value of k there we just have n so let me just remove this and remove k and for each test case if you see we will have different value of n and different value of a and let me just take this as input and let me print that this is test case 1 So let me run it again here and see how this runs for each test cases. So we haven't defined the value of k. Let me just remove this 
and run again. So for each test case, we have some sample input. And generally for each test case, we write some logic and it will be independent to that test case only. So here I will write the logic for the test case and it will work for each of the test cases. So you don't have to write the logic again and again. So this is the overall flow and now let's see how we'll take the 2d array as an input so this is a 2d array of 3 cross 3 and i have the value of n and our array will be 3 cross 3 so let me just take the input for n Now I have to create an array of 3 cross 3 that will be something like this. So for that I will just take an array. And since we are having n rows we can just have a loop. Now I have told you how to take a single line with multiple value as an input and for that I have told you you have to use this function. So what I'll do I'll take this as an input and store the value of each line in temp and then I'll append it to a list and this will become list of list. So after this if I try to print and let me just try to take this as input. So if you see here we are getting the 2D array with 3 cross 3 size and why I am getting this float value because we have mapped it to float or if you want you can map it to int and you will have the correct value. So if you see here this is working and okay so this is how we take input and I think this should be enough for this video and if you like my videos please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.